back to the TED Show. This is our series, Broker Pains. I love this series. We're getting tons of great feedback. Uh, we had agent recruitment, then we had, no, we had agent retention, then agent recruitment. And today we're gonna talk about branding by design. We have our expert, Marion Weiler with Weiler International, and we have Yvonne Sandoval with Leverage 365. We're here to help you with your broker and team leader and agent pains, uh, what's important to you, what you'd like to see. So we want your feedback, uh, we want your input, and we wanna leave you with some nuggets and some insight that are gonna help your business. And we will start with an introduction by the one and only Marion Weiler. Welcome, Marion. Thank you, Ted. Hi, Yvonne. Hi, everyone. Hi, Yvonne. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about you for those people who have are tuning in for the first time, Marion. Uh, tell us about you and Weiler International. I'm uh, Marion Weiler. I'm the founder and CEO at Weiler International Business and Leadership mm -hmm. Consulting. And I'm a former executive uh, in a real estate uh, firm, an uh, industry leading real estate firm. And I now advise uh, brokerage leaders in creating a brand that goes to the next level and creating that brand loyalty that will get you to that next level and, and truly support uh, the growth that you're envisioning. Y'all are getting some free nuggets here from somebody who consults for a living. So you definitely want to keep tuning in. And of course, we all know Yvonne Sandoval. Yvonne, for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about you. Sure. I'm Yvonne, the owner of Leverage 365. We are a marketing firm that helps real estate agents and brokers stay top of mind with their database of contacts. Yes. So we have lots of knowledge here. I don't know what I bring, but polka dots perhaps. Um, I'm excited for this show because I know that a lot of our agent broker, our agents, our brokers and our team leaders, they're struggling right now. And it's not because the market's bad, it's because they are trying to retain their agents. They're trying to recruit new agents. They're trying to figure out how to make an impact in what seems like a very uh, flooded market, um, a market that is saturated uh, with agents and with brokerages and new ones opening all the time. Today, we're going to talk about branding by design. Branding is one of my favorite topics. People don't realize they're their own brand. They don't even understand, even if they know that, what that even means and how they represent themselves and how that either attracts or distracts people from wanting to do business with them. So you chose this topic. I love it, uh, Marion. So tell us why and give us kind of a background. Yeah, I, I love that topic of branding. And, and that's in all honesty, like I, I could uh, talk about for hours because branding goes so much further than the design, the creative. And when we hear branding, it's automatically often uh, equalized with marketing, right? What what cool designs do you have? What kind of flyer do we have? What kind of graphics can we use? And it really goes so much beyond that. And you said branding by design, it is not an accident. Your brand and your brand, cor your corporate identity, your brokerage identity that is based on your brand comes from the design aspect. It comes through every touch point of your brokerage. It's the behaviors that you have, the customer service you have, the values that you have. And so we'll be talking about that a bit uh, more today. And in addition to the by design, I would say branding beyond design because that is really what we're talking about here. No doubt design and graphics and consistency, all really, really important, but it's only a little piece of the, the whole I thing. like the beyond, and I probably should have put that in the title, <laughs> since I'm sure that's what the original title was. And since my audience knows Ted messes up all the time, it really should be branding <laughs> beyond design. And I think what, what people get confused with, Yvonne, you deal with this all the time because you keep people top of mind. You know how important branding is. You speak on it. Um, what are some of the mistakes that you find? What are some of the things that you see brokerages and agents and team leaders doing when they are trying to figure out how to brand themselves and brand their brokerages? Well, you know, they're relying on the national brand or if they have a, a if they are a national brand to do all of the work. Um, and I think that that is something like we discussed earlier in another show is that every every brokerage, whether they are a national brand or they're a boutique, each one of them has a different 
culture on like boots on the ground kind of culture. So just relying on the corporate colors to speak to your audience is just not enough because it's not just about a logo. I mean, we all know a logo has never sold a home ever. <laughs> um, and a logo has never ever you know brought an agent to your doors. It has attracted them, but eventually what the branding that you've put forth, meaning your entire corporate message, how that mm -hmm. speaks to the agents, not only to the agent, but of course to the clients, to customers, um, is a big part of what you need to focus on. So that would be one of the things that I see happening um, and that I would like for people to, to really you know, think about what is it that this brand means and what does it mean to me? So Marion, what define the word brand? Because again, I think a lot of people will say, well, I'm not a brand or uh, my, my office isn't a brand, like Yvonne said, it's a national thing, but you know, I just represent them. I'm not really a brand on my own, which is not accurate, correct? It's not, a, no, it's, it couldn't be further from the truth actually, because everybody and everything is a brand. And when I say brand, what I mean is we all stand for something. And when we're looking at it from an agent perspective, as an agent, you are a brand in such that you have uh, certain things that you're, you're positioning, that you are strong in, that you bring to your clients and the values, again, that you stand for, that the, the, your clients are engaging with you because of that. So you are a brand in yourself. And so to Yvonne's point, when you have a national or a larger brokerage where there is a strong uh, brokerage brand behind it, I always explain it in a way where that corporate brand is hopefully giving you wings to fly even further and higher, right? That's that's what you have to think about when you affiliate affiliate with a, a brokerage brand. Like, what do I want this brand to to? Where does do I want this to carry me? But then when it comes down to me as an agent, I have my own agent brand, and the two need to really align and come together because a real estate is a people business. And even when you look at a larger, uh, whatever, a brokerage brand, you have so many different types of agents, so many different markets, and they all stand for something slightly different. And that is that uniqueness that really makes the difference, that connects with people, doesn't connect with everybody. It's not supposed to connect with everybody, but you have to build that brand of what you want to stand for and then bring that to the forefront. And that's Yvonne, you know, your, your expertise of how do we bring that out there? So the people that need to connect with me as an agent are attracted by what I bring and the services, and that will make the whole dynamic of that relationship so much more smooth. Yeah, a little Go ahead, Yvonne. A little trivia, just so from the marketing geek over here. Um, so the word branding actually originates from 2700 BC from the ancient Egyptians. They were the first ones to do any kind of branding and branding literally meant that they put a, uh, they took a hot poker and they put a brand on the back of the ox. And that was the first time that had ever been done to differentiate their, their group of animals from another person's group of animals. So the word brand came from the ancient Egyptians. So that's what we're doing these to this day is may, having this logo or this this brand, literally, to differentiate ourselves from another brand, so that people can flock to what we are to our flock. So I, I think I think what's interesting, like I'll use an example. Most people know me. I didn't realize it was my brand, my jackets and my shoes. Yeah. I don't care where I'm at, what comment, where, what any place that I happen to be, it's always about, oh my God, we love your jackets and shoes. People will actually comment on that. And so people know me for this. That is just a small part of my brand, but I didn't realize until I was wearing this and got all the comments that that's actually part of my, a big part of my brand and how people recognize me. So I have to ask you, Marion, is it all about how people recognize you? How do we create, let's give them some pointers. How do we create a brand that's honest, 
that is uh, reflects us in a way that's real because you can't have a pretend brand. People will smell through that literally a mile away. How do we create a brand with what we're already doing and recognize that we have already kind of established it. Now maybe we either need to change it, tweak mm -hmm. it, do whatever we have to do, but we definitely have something that people recognize us by. You are the, the perfect example of a brand tip. So why don't we use you as this example? Because people know what to expect. When they, when they come on your show, they're listening to you, they're watching you, they're experiencing you, you are your own brand that is not one day like this, one day like a, a, a something different. They know they're going to see another cool jacket. They're going to know they see another awesome pair of shoes. It's that expectation of what what is going to engage with them. And the same is true for a brokerage uh, brand. And the second piece of that, the, the, the way to build a brand is consistency. Once you truly understand what kind of brand you're looking to build, don't be everything to everybody, but pick and choose of what your brand, what you want your brand to stand for, and then show that consistency over time because it does take time. If you have a new brand that you're building or you're going into a new market, I've worked with uh, brokerages that have had an amazing brand in, in the markets they were in and not over 90% knew what, what their brand stood for. And then they ventured into new markets and they wondered why this, this didn't carry. And so it's because you are in a new market. So you can leverage what you have built in other markets and you can leverage that, but make sure that you customize it so it actually truly fits, but along the same lines of what your brand, again, is standing for. That stays the same. Agreed. I think there ha consistency is important in so many things. We could have a whole mm -hmm. show on consistency yeah. in business. Uh, and how important that is. But if you have, let's say you have a team leader and a broker who's watching and saying, all right, well, I have a national brand, whatever that would be, X, Y, Z. Um, but that's great to attract on an initial level, right? So you know this one, you know the balloons, you know whatever it is, the marketing, but they want to make it their own and they don't know what that even means. They haven't established, which you mentioned earlier, exactly what that looks like. They probably know the people they might want. They probably know their basic integrity and what's important to them and how they want their business to be. They don't know how to convert that. They don't know how to make it their own and then make it so that it is attractive to other people who think the same way and love that kind of branding. So what can you give, what kind of pointer can you give to a broker or a team leader that's thinking like that right now? Yeah, if you're starting from that perspective, it's it's the positioning and and that personal touch because that emotional tie truly fulfilling that need that your client has in that marketplace. Say for example, you're going for the luxury space. Uh, you want to truly speak to that luxury. You can't be speaking to uh, you know, something that is not relevant to them. And, and that requires you to literally put yourself in your, your ideal client's shoes to understand what are they going through? What are the pain points that you can provide solutions? For example, you know, if, uh, like when I, we're talking about even relocation business, if that is something you are, you are uh, looking to, to get into. What does it mean? Where are the pain points for your clients as they go through relocation and really think beyond. And once you start getting yourself into their shoes, that's when you'll be able to really identify and communicate in a way where you are creating an emotional tie, where you're drawing, where you're attracting, where people will find you and will resonate with what you stand for. So. Agreed. And Yvonne, I got to throw a question to you. Sure. Um, so what do you think or what do you say to the agents, the brokerages that are, I've decided I'm going to be all things to all people. I'm a commercial broker, a property manager, an international realtor. I have 75 CRM da, 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 after my name, and I'm going to be the specialist in everything. Is that good for a brand or not so good for a brand? Well, I'm very much... Um 
a, a champion of the one thing. So that's a book and it's also a philosophy. So very much like my business, I'm very, very focused on one thing, doing that one thing at a high level. Uh, now there are others who may feel that they want to take on three or four, five or 75 things at one time, but that's, it's just literally not humanly possible to exceed um, and to be successful at a high level at all 75 things. So I say that you should identify that which your skill set is uh, can be applied, and then focus on that skill set and to continue to build that into or around the brand that you've chosen as a broker. When a broker does go and you know starts a, a, a brokerage, whether that is they you know, franchise or they become one of the, they start their own, they have to adhere to the brand that they chose to represent. And that means that everything and every, that you do and every one that you bring into that brokerage has to align to that brand. So um, knowing and being conscious of that is really important for the brand's success. So um, I really focus on letting people know that you chose the brand for a reason um, and that now you have to adhere to that branding and that branding is going to really dictate to you what the message is going to be coming out of you corporately and as well as uh, to, down to your agents, to your support staff and to your customers. So if you're not good with that, then you should find a brand that does represent you. Um, and like Ted, uh, what he does is he has his tribe and that tribe is attracted to the message that he puts out, my, myself included. Um, I only work with people that are on the same page as me and I'm sure I'm the same thing with Marion. Um, you know, corporately, it's funny, um, Century 21, if we all remember, they used to have their agents all wear gold jackets. Oh, yes. Those terrible gold mm -hmm. jackets. No offense, Century 21, but well, wow. It was a way of branding back in, you know, the 70s and early 80s that gave a, an adherence to brand so that they couldn't even choose their own clothing. Um, so that was really a way of, you know, a corporation making sure their brand was never misrepresented. So, you know, we've, we've gotten away from that, but we still have branded adhesion at the, that people have to do in order to maintain their brokerage. Um, and I think that that's something that a broker has to really, really think about. Um, you chose it, now you have to live it. And now the message that you put out should attract those agents who are on the same, on the same page. All right, so we could speak branding and we, we gotta come back to branding because I guarantee as people are watching and listening to this, they have a million questions for you too. Um, and so we're going to continue the series. The series is Broker Pains. So if you want more on branding, if you have specific questions on branding, if you have specific questions on recruitment, retention, anything that you are feeling that pain in your team, on your team or in your brokerage, we want to hear from you and we want you to let us know. Marion, what is the best way that as these brokers and team leaders are thinking about it, they can engage you, ask questions, get a consult from you. Reach out through my website, wilerinternational.com and uh, get in touch with me uh, through there. Definitely want to do that. And Yvonne, if you want to stay top of mind in your database, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Get leverage 365.com or 407-915. 8,000. Y'all, this series is definitely important for your business. And as we are going into the last quarter of 2021, as we are here, we definitely want to figure out, ramp up, change, do whatever it is. This is a great time for you to figure out how you want to plan your 2022, who could believe 2022, and beyond. And so branding is one of those. We did recruitment. We've done retention. We're going to continue to talk about topics that we know are important to you. And if there's something that we have missed or something you really like to hear about, please reach out to me, Marion, or Yvonne, and we will get it on the show and talk about it because we want to fix your broker pains. You guys, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. We'll be back next time.